This lesson deals with an introduction to computer-aided circuit analysis. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in Chapter 3 starting on page 71. In the course, we're going to use two software packages, PSPICE and MATLAB. Let me tell you a little bit about the first software package. In the 1970s, there was a program called SPICE, which was written to help in the design of integrated circuits. In fact, it's an acronym for Simulation Program with Integrated Circuit Emphasis. When PCs were introduced in the 1980s, a company called Microsim Corporation rewrote the SPICE code and called it PSPICE, or Personal Computer SPICE. In the late 90s, Microsim was purchased by another company called ORCAD, and they were eventually purchased by a company called Cadence Design Systems. And they are the current producers of PSPICE. You can still find a free student version of PSPICE at ORCAD's website. The PSPICE program has lots of features, and it might be easiest to show you an example as to how to write a PSPICE program, and then we're just going to build our knowledge as we look at different examples. So let's take the example we did on page 42 where we solved for three mesh currents, I1, I2, and I3, and we found that they were 1.75 amps, 1.25 amps, and 6.75 amps. Then try to solve the same problem on PSPICE. Do this in four steps. First step is to pick one node and call it your reference node. This would be essentially ground, or we'll label it as node zero. I'm going to label the remaining nodes with just numbers. So I'll pick this as my reference node, even though there wasn't a reference in the original problem. And I'll number the rest of my nodes 1 through 5. You don't have to have sequential numbers. You can actually use letters or names if you'd like. But let's make it simple and just use numbers. We also have to assign a unique name to every component in our circuit. So I'll call this resistor R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, and then V1 and V2. Step 2 is to encode the schematic. Voltage sources begin with the letter V. And the first node that we're going to give SPICE is the plus node. So here in this particular case, here's V1 with the plus node at 1 and the minus node at 0. So the encoding of that would be V1. And you can have up to seven letters or characters here, and then a space, and then 1, space, and then 0. And then you give it the value. In this case, it's 100 volts. I'll draw a, a line through my circles here indicating this is the number 0, not the letter O. My voltage source V2 is between nodes 3 and 4. It has a value of 50. Resistors begin with the letter R. Here's resistor R1. It's between nodes 1 and 3, or 3 and 1. So you give either node first and the other one second. It has a value here of 10 ohms. R2 is between nodes 1 and 2. It has a value of 3. And R3 is between nodes 2 and 3, or 3 and 2. I'll put it between 3 and 2 here just to be different, with a value of 2 ohms. R4 is between two nodes, so I'll put down 5 and 4 with a value of 4. And then lastly, my resistor R5 is between nodes 5 and 0. It has a value of 6 ohms. Now, there's also a current source in this problem, and it's between two nodes. But SPICE considers every component to be passive, and given the current is in this direction, then its no default notation is that this is the plus terminal and this is the minus terminal. So we'll give the first terminal as 5 and the second as 2. It has a value of 5 amps. And that's how we would encode a schematic in PSPICE, or the original SPICE program. We next need to add control commands to have it solve our problem. And what PSPICE added to the original SPICE program was a feature called dot .probe. And this converts every voltage and every current into something you can plot. We're going to plot versus time in a thing called the transient analysis. I'll explain this a little bit later in the course. It's abbreviated dot .tran. I'll have to give it four numbers. The second number here is the final time on your plot. Let's say we plot out to 200 seconds. The number over here is what's called the print step. It's going to give you a minimum number of points printed on the screen. Now, to get a smooth graph, you need about 200 points. So I'll take this number and divide it by 200. I'm going to start plotting my results at time t equals 0. And then the fourth number is called the ceiling step. For right now, just pick the ceiling step to equal the print step. I'll explain in ECE 202 in Chapter 8 on page 30 as to why we're doing this. For right now, pick your final time, divide that by at least 200. You get 200 points on the screen minimally. Start plotting your data at time t equals zero, and make your ceiling step equal to your print step. The PSPICE program, as well as the SPICE program, has to have a title line and a dot end line. If you skip the title, it'll take the first line that it sees and considers that to be the title of the problem. State whatever it is. In this case, we're doing example on page 42. And the last statement needs to be dot end to indicate to the program that our file is at the end. We can concatenate files, and this is why it needs to know when the next one's going to start. 
If you look at my homepage, and you can find on the ECE 201 button, there's a handout for how to run PSPICE on the computers at Michigan State University, but it'd also be very similar to running it on your own PC. Listed below here is my typed file from the commands we had on the previous page. I called this example underscore page 42.cir and put this in a directory where I'm going to be running my PSPICE. The default extension for this program is, is CIR, and so if you use that extension, it'll be looking for those files when you run the program. In the handout, it also tells you how to print the following pictures. So what I graphed here were node voltages 1, 2, and 3. See they're marked here with different characters. When you run the program, these will be in color. Node voltage 1 was my 100 volt source, and sure enough, it's 100 volts. I'm marking here the x-axis and the y-axis, so at 60 seconds I have 100 volts, but I have that for every instant in time. Voltage 2 is 98.5, although we didn't solve for that, and load voltage 3 is 87.5. Did a second graph with the remaining node voltages. Here's node voltage 4 and 5, and this is the voltage between nodes 3 and 4. Now you can use an uppercase letter or a lowercase letter, it doesn't make any difference. But node voltage 4 here is the square, it was 37.5 volts. And then the voltage between nodes 3 and 4 is a 50 volt source. You could also type V parentheses 3 minus V parentheses 4 in a math operation. This is a shorthand way of just getting that result. First node is positive, second node is negative. You can also have the currents in my circuit plotted. Now for a voltage source, the first node was the plus and the second was the minus. For resistances, the direction that SPICE picks is first node is positive, second node is negative. And this resistor here, if we listed one first and two second, it assumes the current's flowing in this direction. I've labeled on here all the currents in our file based upon how I number them. So here is the resistor R1. It was between nodes 1 and 3. R2 was between 1 and 2. R3 was between 3 and 2. R4 was between 5 and 4 and R5 was between 5 and 0. Some of those currents are also our mesh currents. So here's a graphing of the current in resistor R1, R2, and R3. This is this notation in probe. This particular value over here was the value of one of our mesh currents. Do this again on two graphs, so it wouldn't appear to be too crowded. And plotted I of R4, I of R5. The mesh current I3 is a negative of the current in the resistor in R4. And again, in probe you can do mathematical operations. So you could put a minus I of R4, and that was corresponding to this result right here, which is actually our mesh current, which was 6.75 amps. You can also plot different quantities in probe. If we take the product of voltage and current, we can get the power that's absorbed or generated. The default notation in SPICE is a passive sign convention, so if I ask for the current in a voltage source, it's going from the plus to the minus node. So this would be a plotting of the power absorbed by voltage source V1. That's actually over here. It's absorbing a minus 175 watts. In other words, it's generating 175 watts. If we take the voltage across the second voltage source, it was between nodes 3 and 4, and the current going into the plus terminal, that would be the power absorbed by the voltage source V2. That's actually showing up over here. It's at plus 337.5. So it isn't generating power, it's actually absorbing power. And now my current source is hooked up between nodes 5 and 2, and the current is the current of the current source. This would again be the, the notation for absorbing power, and that's shown here as a minus 440 watts. So in other words, that current source is generating power. So the voltage source V1 and the current source I sub S are both generating power, and the voltage source V2, as well as the resistances, are absorbing power. The other software package we're going to use in the course is called MATLAB, and it's an acronym for Matrix Laboratory, and it's basically a math package. Let's take the example we did in PSPICE and go back to page 42 and get the matrix that we wrote for that same circuit. That's shown right here. If you recall, we saw for I1, I2, and I3 and found that they were 1.75 amps, 1.25 amps, and 6.75 amps. Let's give MATLAB the same matrix and see if we get the same answer. There is a student version of MATLAB, but it's not free. So for those students that are not on campus at Michigan State University, you'll have some expense in acquiring the program. For those that are on campus, MATLAB is installed on all the PCs in the computer lab. 
Locate the MATLAB icon and double click on it and it'll open up a command window and you'll see this prompt which is two inequality signs. In our problem we found that the voltage was equal to the resistance times the current in matrix form. And let's use the same variables in describing our matrices for MATLAB. MATLAB is basically a line editor and so what we're going to do is we're going to enter columns by putting them in a row. So here we have three rows in one column. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is describe this as a vector v equals square parentheses and then what's in row one, column one, we'll put here, which is 50. And then if we put a semicolon, it then goes to the next row. So this is gonna be row two, column one, semicolon, row three, column one. And again, square parentheses here. Now when you hit enter, it'll echo back what you've typed and you can see if you made a typing mistake. If you did, you could use the, the up arrow key to go back and correct it. Now our matrix here, which is our resistive terms, is square, it's three by three. We're gonna enter the data in a single row in MATLAB if we leave a space between the entries, that indicates it's in the same row. In other words, we have nine, minus five, and six, and then semicolon again, we get you the second row, minus three, 15, minus two, semicolon, and then the third row, minus one, zero, and plus one. So this time we're gonna enter this three by three matrix just in a single row. I'm gonna call this R, because that was our resistive matrix. And again, square brackets and square brackets. Hit enter, and it'll echo back the matrix. And you can just check whether that agrees with what you were typing in. There are other ways to run MATLAB, and we'll talk about this in ECE202. Our equation is V is equal to R times I, and in MATLAB it can do matrix division in the following way. If you want to solve for I, we can say that R is divided into V, using a backslash here. Now, you have to put the R first, and then the backslash, and then the V. If you don't, you get a very different answer. And here's the output of the program, it's indicating three answers. This is going to be I1, I2, and I3. That's exactly what we had solved for previously in the chapter. And these are some software packages we're going to use in analyzing and designing circuits.